Anyone who walks into a Montessori classroom for the first time is blown away by this incredible sense of calm. There's an orderly environment, children work together cooperatively, harmoniously, there's no chaos. You have this classroom with 20 or more children and everything seems to be on point. How is this happening and what makes this possible? Let me tell you the secret. It's the Montessori ground rules. On Montessori 101 today, we're going to share some more lessons, tools and tips that will help you implement Montessori successfully in your homes and in school. And we're going to talk about ground rules. What are they? How do they work? And how do we implement them in our Montessori settings? Now, before we can get into a discussion about ground rules, we need to understand what discipline means in a Montessori setting. It's very different from the way you and I grew up. We're used to rewards and punishments and timeouts. That does not work at all. Now, we have some brilliant videos that we've released that talk to you about discipline and how we implement rules in Montessori. So I'm going to link those right here. You can have a look at them. You can watch them whenever you have the time. And it'll help you to better understand what discipline means in Montessori settings. So until you do get a chance to watch these videos, let me give you a little perspective about Montessori discipline in a nutshell. Like all aspects of Montessori philosophy, Montessori discipline is child-centered. The Montessori method understands that children have the ability to make good choices when we give them the freedom and that their natural, natural inclination is to do well. No child enjoys messing up and getting into trouble. They want to be good. It's just for us to create the right environment and the right setting for them. So instead of rewards and punishments, Montessori discipline is about connection, boundaries and natural consequences. In a Montessori classroom, when you do well, when you, you know, do a task well, it's not about getting a piece of candy or getting a sticker or a star. The pride comes from within that I have done my best. That's what a child feels. In the same way, a child who leaves a mess on their table doesn't get a time out. They don't have to lose their lunch break or something like that. Instead, they will experience a natural consequence. Until you've put this away, you won't be able to do the next task. So it's all done in a very respectful way. Rather than forcing children to behave through control, punishment and bribery, Montessori discipline is designed to help children learn to behave in a safe, respectful and productive environment. Now, of course, every Montessori classroom is different and every Montessori teacher or guide runs their home and their classroom differently. However, one thing that remains constant across all boards is the Montessori ground rules. The ground rules are the backbone of Montessori discipline and they are largely responsible for maintaining this calm, focused and joyful environment. So what are the ground rules? Ground rules put forward a set of expected behaviors that can help us to run a smooth home or a smooth classroom routine. Now, depending on the age of the children, we can set them with the children or the teacher can set them. That's for you to be determined depending on your children's level of development. We can also explain ground rules as a set of boundaries and rules that help to set up a condition in our home or our schools where we can function safely and comfortably. When we don't have ground rules in place, that's when disruptions happen and our routine doesn't go as smoothly and our learning, of course, is not as smooth as it should be. When we have ground rules in place, it allows children to take responsibility for their own actions. It gives children a clear understanding of what our expectations are in this setting and children get to hold each other accountable and therefore learning is successful and pleasant. Sounds amazing, right? Now, most adults have a very uh, wrong idea of what ground rules are. Adults feel that ground rules are in place to help me as a teacher or me as a parent do my job well, to make my setting smooth and I can manage my children. That could not be further from the truth. The ground rules are set in place so that all of us as a community can function well. 
Ground rules are put in place with the child's best interests at heart. And that's what we need them to see. That's what's going to be uh, help us to implement the ground rules successfully. I want you to try and think about it, okay? Now, when there are a set of rules, or even for you as an adult, when you have to follow a rule, and it doesn't make sense to you, you don't see the benefit for you in that rule, it's very hard to follow. You may force yourself to, but it's hard to do that. But when you understand that this rule is set in place for my benefit, it's going to help me be the best version of myself, then it's easier for you to follow. And that's what children need to get. Always keep in mind that we set the ground rules for the child's safety so that he always has a sense of belonging and his self-esteem should never be compromised. Now, Montessori rules are simple and easy to understand. They're designed to protect a child's rights and to hold them accountable for their responsibilities. And at the core of everything is the respect for the child. That must never be compromised. All the rules that you may have heard of can be simplified and condensed down into these three simple rules that we have in a Montessori classroom. Respect for oneself, respect for others, and respect for the environment. I know it sounds really unrealistic, you know, how can these three rules help to, you know, maintain a calm and focused classroom? But hold on, I'm going to talk you through it and you're going to agree with me very soon. So let's imagine a scenario where a child is walking and he goes and he grabs another material from his friend. That is violating respect for others. What about when a child makes a mess and refuses to clean up? That's violating respect for the environment. And when a child refuses to take part in class activities, he's not learning, that's violating respect for oneself. So you can see here that the common thread is respect. And that's the one lesson that we need to help our children understand so that the ground rules can work well for all of us. So one of the first things we need to do is have a discussion about respect. If we're talking about self-respect, that means we should be forgiving of ourselves when we make mistakes. When we do make mistakes, let's handle them in a positive way. We should be honest and keep our promises. We take care of our bodies, we are punctual, we are grateful, and we take responsibility and we are kind to ourselves. This is the way in which children can show respect to themselves. When we are explaining to children about respect for others, then we guide them through discussions about listening to their friends when they speak, taking turns when speaking, being sensitive to each other's feelings, showing manners through the grace and courtesy activities, being quiet in the environment when their friends are working, complimenting their friends, walking quietly in this environment, being helpful to each other, being kind and asking permission within this environment. Under respect for the environment, we talk about things as such as handling our material with care, being tidy, cleaning up after ourselves, putting materials away, again, walking in the classroom, pushing in our chair under the table when we are done, and using mats for all of our work. All of these things can be discussed in circle time. We can do role plays. We can read them stories. In different ways, we give them an understanding of what respect looks like so that when we add in the rules, they can understand why these rules are in place. I hope this also helps you see how all of these rules, tidying up, walking in the classroom, speaking in soft voices, all of these things fall under those three main rules that I talked about before. Now, one of the things that I feel contributes to the success of ground rules in a Montessori setting is the way that we present it. It's extremely unique. Now, when we grew up, I remember teachers saying, you cannot run in the classroom, you cannot talk till you're called upon, you may not do this, you cannot do that. It was all, it was such a long list and it was all about the things we could not do. Do you remember something similar like this? Now, in a Montessori setting, things are presented very differently. Let me pick just one simple rule for you and I'll explain to you how we present these rules to children. We often have children running in indoors, right? And that is one of the things that isn't allowed in a classroom. So we would present our ground rules at circle time and we pick the rule that we want to present that day. 
and we have a discussion with the children. So sitting with my children at circle time and I talk to them, children, how do you think we should move in this classroom? Is it a good idea to run? And I'm open to hearing what they have to say and they will, you know, they're very chatty. Everybody has something to share. And we talk about it and somebody will say, no, we shouldn't run. It's not a good idea. Why is it not a good idea, children? What could happen if we run in this classroom? And they come up with different, you know, answers. We might fall down. We could drop something. We could bump into our friends. We could hurt ourselves. Okay, those are great ideas. We talk about it. Those are great answers. Now, if we don't run in the classroom, how should we be moving? And that's when they will offer up to you, we should walk. So now it makes sense, right? There's a reason for the rule. When there's a reason for the rule, it's easier for me to follow. Now, here's where something even more magical happens. Most classroom would stop right there and say, okay, we walk in the classroom, the rule has been established, but not Montessori. In very true Montessori fashion, we will show the children how to do this, right? So children, we've decided that we should walk in this classroom. Let me show you how, and then I'll give you a turn. And the teacher gets up and she walks around the circle in a graceful, poised manner. She sits back down and then she invites a child to try. And of course, everybody wants to try. Their hands will shoot up. I want to try. I want to try. And they take a turn. As much time as you have on that given day, you invite, you know, children to try one by one. When they finished, you thank them for showing us how to walk in the classroom. And at the end of it all, we wrap up by saying, today we've learned how to walk in the classroom. We make a pact amongst ourselves. Can we remind each other to always walk in this way? Because we already said it might be very dangerous or we could hurt ourselves. So in case any of us, you know, forgets to follow this rule, let's remind our friends. So it's a very friendly way that the rule is being, uh, you know, implemented. It's also respectful to the children. And we are not <clears throat> making them afraid. We are not putting the fear of the teacher. If you do this, then you will be punished. It's just, you know, if you do this, you might fall down. You might hurt yourself. So there's understanding. And as a community, we all decide to follow the rule, not just the children, but the teacher is part of this community as well. Isn't this beautiful? In this simple way, we allow the children to see, to understand the why, to understand the how, to try it out, to get feedback on how they're doing things. Now, as beautiful as this is, it isn't magical. It's not going to just happen like that. Rules are something that we need to remind the children of daily. So when we start at the beginning of the school year, whatever your rules are, try and remind the children about these rules on a daily basis. It doesn't have to be trying it out and doing it every time, but just a gentle reminder. Remember the rules that we have that's going to make our classroom work beautifully? Who can remind me and ask the children to remind you of those rules? Uh, it's a good idea to have your rules posted somewhere in the classroom so that you can always point to them. You can signal to them so that when they forget, then they have that visual reminder about the rules. You know, it's always going to be easier for some children to follow rules and a little harder for others. It takes a little bit of time. So just, you know, be patient, have some faith, you know, as we remind them, as we do it in a respectful way, as we as teachers role model these rules, everything will start to fall in place. It's a process. It takes time. But once it does happen, it's going to make things very smooth for everybody in the classroom. Now, how many rules should we have? Three to four is a decent amount. Don't look at eight and ten and even six rules can be too many. Simple rules like how we walk in the classroom, how we talk in the classroom, putting our materials away or, you know, maybe you want to phrase it as everything has a home. Uh, you see what your setting is and how, you know, what kind of rules you need to implement in your setting. If you're doing things at home, the rules may be slightly different about, you know, putting things away at a certain time. What kind of consequences do you want to have for your rules? That is also really up to you and the kind of program that you're running. 
It's also important to state your rules in a way that is very clear and easy to understand. I've seen many rules are very vague. They will say to children, you need to sit nicely at circle time. Sit nicely could mean anything. It could mean with my legs stretched out in front of me. It could be sitting on my knees. It could be cross-legged. Be very, very clear. These are children after all. They really need to know what you mean. That's why showing them really, really helps. Um, definitely you want to state your rules in a positive way so we don't want to say no running in the classroom no talking until you're called upon because all the children are hearing is no all right and uh, the minute they hear it that's the first thing they want to do that's human nature so state it in a positive way we only walk in this classroom we use soft voices indoors we put our materials away so think about how you're going to phrase your rules. Once you get your ground rules in place and you are implementing them with your children, you're going to see that it's going to help you have a very, very harmonious setting and it's going to make everything easy for everyone. We do have a video on um, a couple of ground rules that I'm going to link over here for you to watch and you can see how it's done with children and in this way you can pick and choose your own rules and implement them in your homes and your schools. I hope you've enjoyed this video on the Montessori ground rules. Uh, let us know in the comments below if it's worked for you or if you have any challenges or if you have any questions. I'm really happy to answer them. Make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. And until we meet again, have a beautiful day.